There we go. Hey, it's Rick. <laughs> it's Rick Wiseman live here on bourbonblog.com. Rick is the founder of Copper Fox Distillery. And you're, are you, you're in uh, Williamsburg right now, aren't you? Uh, I am. I am. I was in Sperryville today, but um, I'll give you a uh, little quick uh, spin around the room. It's always such an exciting place to be, and we love being. I, I like the fact that you have two locations. I mean, some distilleries only have two locations, one location. You have two, which is pretty exciting. It is. It is. I think we're ready for three, but um, uh, don't tell my wife. <laughs> tell her not to watch this. Wish she won't. Where, where, would your, where would your third one be? Do you know where your third one uh, is? I can't say. I can't say, but um, it'll be fun. It'll would be it be fun. someplace in Virginia? Um. I'm going to just leave that completely up to the uh, whiskey gods right now, but it's going to be a fun, but I, we still have a little to digest here. So <laughs> trying to get my handle on this uh, camera action here. No, you're so. doing, you're doing great. You're doing great. Uh, we can definitely see. So I guess show us, show us around a little bit and then we'll, you and I will taste some of the whiskey together and tell us a little about, I think a lot of people know about your whiskey, but for those that don't, you were, um, you were really one of the first in the craft spirits revolution and among the first to make American single malt in, in this era, right? I mean, you were, you were one of the first. I, I guess so. Yeah. The, um, you know, uh, Fritz Maytag had a single malt rye out and um, the guy um, uh, McCarthy's uh, yeah. really nice. I uh, was buying malt from Scotland, but our idea was a little bit different. Um, we, uh, I, I just had this, this uh, lightning bolt hit me and we decided to, um, I wanted to malt our own barley and use fruit wood smoke rather than peat smoke. Yeah. And that, that was the genesis. I was just like, yeah, that makes sense. Someone should do it. And I wanted to try whiskey that was made that way. And when I went to buy it, it was non-existent. So, um, I was just at a point in my life, everything kind of came together. I went to Scotland, told them what I was thinking about doing and. Uh, then I was just, you know, why don't you guys do it? And they're like, Oh no, lad, you got to do it. And I'm like, Oh Jesus, <laughs> really? <laughs> so they gave me an internship and I went there and learned how they malted and smoked the malt at Bumore and came back and set up a little copycat miniature, uh, malt facility in Sperryville, Virginia, that we started smoking malt with applewood and cherry wood and experimenting with the smoke levels and the fruit wood. And uh, here we are. So I'm starting. Uh, can, hey, you know, uh, it's your show and I don't want to like take the lead here. Or please, anything. please do. Um, but can we have a sip of whiskey? Let's have a sip. All right. This is I'm, I'm starting with the original single malt. All right. That's what I poured too. I poured and, the original single malt. This is such unique stuff and, and one of the most distinct flavor profiles on any whiskey. I mean, this is one that, of these that you would never, you would never not know what it is. I would always know this if somebody handed it to me. It's beautiful stuff. It is, it is, um, it's still one of my favorites. Um, you know, we'll talk about the peach wood later and I, I love that. Um, but um, uh, this, I, I, it's just got a flavor and maybe I've tricked myself into liking this so much, but I, I love this whiskey. So tell us what, what, is those, what does that fruit wood do and what's the process of uh, smoking uh, the malt? Are we actually able to see the malting room or is it, would, if you, would that be too far away from the Wi-Fi connection there? And we may have already sent too far away. All right. Uh, can you hear us? Rick, Rick Wiseman, not able to hear you. Is anyone else hearing Rick? I think maybe. Yeah. He oh, there he is. There he is. He's back. Hello. There he is. Did we go too far away from the Wi-Fi? Hello. Can Hello. you see me, Rick? Tom? Yes. Can you see me or hear me? Can you see me? Tom. Here we are. I'm going to re-add Rick. There. And if we need, can you see me now? This is, uh, it's the beauty of live TV, friends. And tell us down below what you're drinking, because I know you guys are drinking something. Tell us down below. Great to have you watching, Ronnie. Uh, you, can exactly. you see me? I can see you. Can you see me? I can see you. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. It's, it was a little bit of a delay, but no worries. I was asking, are we able to see 
the malting room, or would that be too far away from the Wi-Fi? I think it's too far away from the Wi-Fi. Too far away from the Wi-Fi. Well, feel free to show us what there is there. I know it's a cool-looking place. Yeah. Well, we'll um, uh, we'll 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 have to get another show on there, and we'll we'll hook it up or whatever. We'll go to the malting room another time. No problem. Uh, yeah. Tell us what that process is. I think there's a, some people that probably understand the single malt and the uh, malting process and the smoking process, but tell us tell us what is on this whiskey that makes it so different because it is like a blend of American whiskey and scotch. Well, there's two things um, that make it different. One is, um, you know, we do our own floor malting. We use a strain of barley that is um, developed by Virginia Tech. Uh, it's a, a six row. It's called thoroughbred. <clears throat> so the barley strain, I think, might add a little something to it. But then we smoke the malt um, with a, a applewood and cherry wood during the drying process. Malting is just a partial germination of the barley seed that changes the starch to sugar. And every time I think about it, it makes me want to take a sip. Yes, we'll take another sip here. Mm. Mm. And then um, mm. it's always good to have a splash of hand sanitizer you have some of that near you too you, <laughs> you guys are you still making the hand sanitizer right now yes when we can when we can so um yeah so we have the, the so the malting process is the you know the grain gets soaked it initiates the germination process then it goes into the kiln uh, or i'm sorry then on the floor for five days where it, it um physically alters the enzyme in there changes the starch into sugar uh, when the sugar is maximized we want to stop the development of the germination process uh, preserve the enzyme so we want kind of a low heat you know below 200 degrees uh, to dry out the grain and it's at that point we can introduce smoke or not so uh, we do some whiskeys where we don't smoke our gin we make a single malt gin that doesn't uh, do smoke so are we allowed to say gin um, yeah, of course we we enjoy your bird gin. <laughs> well, I didn't know it's not. Of course, I enjoy gin. Absolutely, it's not bourbon, but I guess neither is a single malt. But then the other thing that we do, so it, you know, we got to that point uh, in our um, development, and we had to make a decision on you know which way we're going to age it and whether or not to do anything different there, and um, the original original idea was that we were going to make the barrels out of the fruit wood um but that morphed into using uh we tried um you know chips with the cherry wood and it was a little bit too bitter but apple wood uh you know we did an experiment with chips and the apple wood was such a clear winner that uh we started using toasted apple wood and oak wood chips inside the used bourbon barrels. So we had a choice to make whether or not to go with new barrels or, or used. And um, I liked the softness of, um, you know, of the used barrels and the, you know, the effect that had on Irish and Scotch whiskey. So right. we're kind of a hybrid. And um, isn't it, uh, is it old granddad that uses a portion of used barrels? Uh, well, if it's a, now I'm thinking if it's a bourbon, it might be something in that family. If it's a bourbon, it would have to be new bar barrels. Of course, there may be something in that family. I like the old granddad, but there may be some things they're doing that I'm not aware of. I think they, they got like uh, grandfathered in, pardon the pun, and, and it right. may not be old granddad, but I think there's one brand that is called bourbon and they were allowed mm -hmm. to call it bourbon because, but whatever, but they use some portion of new and some portion of use, but you know, well, look, that up. look, yours, that are, up. yours are, um, then yours are a mix then. No, ours are all used. Yours are always used. Okay. Cause you thought about the fruit wood. Yours are used. Yeah. Right. Right. And, and someone is asking us here about the fruited wood. Um, and thanks for watching Michelle. What effect does the fruit wood have on the flavor profile? I think that's, I was going to ask as well. I mean, this, what really inspired you to think, Hey, why not use some fruit wood and and see what this will do? What really led you to that uh, discovery? Right. Well, it, it you know it was pretty simple. It was um, uh, you know I I didn't know how it would turn out. So it, it, at the time, it was just having a a mindset of experimentation. 
So, um, and like I said, when we tried the cherry wood, it was not good. Um, but the apple wood was, was so good. So it, it, it was, um, and I, I've talked about this before, but not so much like in uh, public media, but we, when, when we started it, it, it didn't really dawn on me that we were going to use the, the chips and the fruit wood to accelerate the aging process. Okay. We really just wanted to augment the flavor profile. So I was still thinking I was going to need to age stuff three or four years. Um, but um, I had a uh, consulting engineer over from Scotland and we were looking around at equipment and I had him over and kind of reviewing my business plan and, and, and trying to look at sites and different things like that. Um, really nice guy. And we would finish our day and we would drink and, you know, I would pull out some of my experiments and, um, you know, I, I had this one little batch and he liked it quite a bit. And he says, you know, this is really pretty good. Do you mind if I send some off to the Scotch whiskey Institute? And I'm like, no, that'd be great. Harry, go ahead. And so he did. And, um, uh, you know, the question was, you know, how old is this whiskey? And they came back and they said, oh, you know, we've determined, thank you for sending the sample. We've determined that this uh, sample is between seven and eight years old. Wow. And I'm like, wow, uh, because it had never been in a barrel. So technically zero. And it had been in chips for six weeks. So uh, then it kind of dawned on me. Um, all right, maybe we're not going to be able to make six week whiskey, but um it's, you know, the extraction and then, you know, then it's, you know, from there, it, it, you know, the, the number said, okay, if we can make something that is great in two years or three years, right. That has that extra depth and everything, um, you know, so that, then, so then it became a search of, for balance and getting the, you know, the, the ratios, right. And getting the flavor profile down to what we wanted. So, and that is what is, taken you know that's just what i've been doing for the last 15 years you're always perfecting it and i i love that you started just around the same time uh we did on bourbon blog in fact um our, our friend uh rick our friend ralph arenzo is watching okay. us says hello to you and says you're right hey. rick is uh, one of those who launched the craft industry so thank you for watching ralph we actually interviewed ralph and gabe last week uh right here on this show and that was fun that's up on our youtube channel uh, uh, much hey, Ralph. hey buddy yeah what a, what a great guy you all have yeah some, i mean you all among the first to really get the um craft distilling going and everyone's perfected it and just come out with more and more products and we love that uh the single malt is amazing and i'll tell you there there's so many cocktails that i know you do with it at that barn that we've played with it uh what do you like making best with the single malt oh um uh well, uh, we do a, a Rick's Roy, which is a, kind of a Manhattan take, a little bit of sweet vermouth. But the, the um, uh, my my good friend John Arroyo uh, is a master mixologist. But whatever he added, just a little bit of Benedictine. Right. So the sweet vermouth, a little bit of Benedictine, um, and I, I'm not sure what bitters he's using, but it's just a great cocktail and. Um, one of my favorites. So uh, chartreuse plays really well with the smoke yes, yes. as well. If you wanted to use that instead of the Benedictine, that's really good. Um, anything that would be, and I would say anything that would be any American whiskey cocktail, even a Sazerac, an old fashioned, or you're looking at Scotch cocktails doing blood and sands. I mean, this would really be a good replacement for a lot of Scotch cocktails too. I mean, it really works nicely. I know. Well, I was thinking about making a Manhattan uh, later with the with the uh, rye whiskey, but nice. um, would you mind if I poured a little bit of the peach wood? Pour some peach wood. Let's talk about the peach wood. And I'll also say one of our favorites that, that I always like to uh, mention with the single malt is one that our buddy Stephen Dennison helped us create called the Malton Alexander, which is your <laughs> single malt whiskey with the coffee ice cream and uh, oh. a little shaving of nutmeg on top. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful Alexander style. So, um, so, okay. So I'm, I've, I got the peach wood right now. And the, the thing is, so we got a hold of, you know, for, uh, 
whatever, 10 years we'd been using apple wood and cherry wood. Right. And it, locally in Virginia, we got a hold of a peach orchard that had been um, taken out. So all these old peach trees. And um, so, you know, what happens when they're at the end of their useful life, whatever, they kind of pull them up by the roots and they plant new trees, you know, and they, so they put them all in a big pile. And on a snowy day when there's not a fire hazard or whatever, and the snow's covering the ground, they have a great big fire. And we were like, hey, can we, uh, before you burn those, could we just try some of that? And so we got some of these, um, you know, the hearts of these old peach trees. And th it was the most time, it was the most fragrant wow. wood, you know, it was really, really unique. So, um, so of course, we malted barley with it and then we said well we got to try the peach wood aging so we did some experiments with chips and jars and the peach wood was you know was really good so we got the balance down so we went down the path so we do 100 percent malted barley with this peach wood smoke and then peach wood and oak chip aged and used bourbon barrels and that's wow. the copper fox peach wood the peach wood. And, uh, peach wood and all we're saying is give peach a chance <laughs> Sounds familiar. You may, we may we may break into a song a little while. The yeah. peach wood. No, it's and it's it's such lovely stuff. Is the um does the the way the fruit tastes is that going to make an impact on the way that wood will influence both on the smoke and on those barrel chips for the advanced maturation, or is there some some semblance of that wood? How do you how do you go about figuring that out? Well, uh, okay, so the, the, you know, I would go back to the original way we did with the apple wood. It's, right. it's not, it's not like you uh, that I'm so smart that um, uh, you know I figured out exactly how it was going to taste before we did it. What we did is we tried it and see if we liked it. Right. So you know, if if something is highly fragrant and aromatic in the burning, then it's got a chance, and then you try it, and then either it tastes good and or it doesn't. So, um, you know, the, the peach wood, we weren't really sure. And you never know how much to make something like this. You know, you're rolling the dice with the, the business and the resources that are limited. Um, but the, the peach we made a good bit of and um, felt it was going to be a soft. And it's really, really nice. So um, we do have a lot of this going to export. So this is going to... Um, uh, you know, around the world, a little bit to Australia, and right. uh, I think uh, California wanted some uh, recently, and I, I think we have a little bit to give to them. But a lot's going to um, uh, Israel and Lebanon, and it's important that we make a, a a chance that there can be you know peach in the Middle East in our lifetime. <laughs> and I think it's probably helping. Have you heard reports back that this is uh, giving them a chance? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Get a peach in the Middle East. Like hey, whis whiskey unites, man. We know that whiskey unites people, and you've done a good job uniting so many good people. And I think also what you've done has been uh, not only in craft distilling, but just an in innovation. I mean, there's there's a lot of brands that'll just start a, a whiskey and say this is a good whiskey, but from the beginning, the very first products you created were innovative and really allowed uh, the flavors to speak from the wood, the barrel. Um, how do you, in general, just looking at how craft distilling has grown the last 15 years, um, how do you, what, what do you think? What do you, th where, where are we at and where, what do we have to look forward to when it comes to uh, craft distilling? Um, well, uh, I, you know, there's so many different variations that you can do that it's gonna affect the flavor. You know, the, the mash bill, you know, for us, the malting and the smokes, um, but certainly um, the, the the guys on the West Coast the that are roasting the malt, is that Westland? Yes. You know, really nice job with that stuff. Um, uh, you know, uh, you know, Ralph and Gabe with the um, uh, baby bourbon and, you know, the, you know, all – I, I, I don't know. There's a lot of good stuff out there. There's there really is. There really and, is. And there's a lot of people making bourbon. And um, so, you know, and we, we couldn't help but make some. And finally, I think we have some that's going to be four years old. 
I think it was actually four years old last month. We're just waiting on the label approval. Wow. We'll have a limited amount of bourbon, but we wanted to do, you know, our influence. So we used um, actually some of the peach wood smoked malt as 20% of the mash bill. So, so in your bourbon, some of that peach wood will be in there. So there's a smoky malt, right? So we didn't right. use the peach wood chips. It's so uh, it's in new barrels. So, so new white charred oaks. So and it's you know it's wonderful. It's good. It's coming out. There's not much of it, but nice. um, when will, when that. will we be seeing this out? Then when can we be looking for the bourbon? Me and I'll send you a bottle, pal, and you can tell me how you like <laughs> it. It, it. Is um, uh, uh, I talked to the attorney today. He said the label approval should be any day. So then give me, you know, three weeks to get the labels printed and mailed and then we'll bottle it up. So it's in the next few months, go. it'll be on the shelves in limited States and places where no, you are. It'll be in your bar and at the distillery. It will not be on the <laughs> come find me. <laughs> because it'll be gone. There's I've had people. It's clamor it. Yeah. So. Cool. I can't. I can't wait to try it. Everything you've you've done. I mean, and the gin too. We love the gin. You do uh, you, the gin. You do is amazing. Um, the Raya whiskey. You've uh, you've created a, a variety of products here uh, the last several years, as well as uh, being in Williamsburg since what was that? Five six years ago, you went to Williamsburg. How long has that been? Like four years ago. It's taken four forever to get this place built, but it's yeah. you know it's together now, and it's um, I don't know. You got to come see it again. So I, oh, I, I, I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna switch my whiskey right now and okay. I, I don't know if you have a bottle of this but um this is a fun whiskey too all right so all right because we malt barley but we also malt other grains yes right so we malt rye we malt wheat uh we malt oats so maybe you could expect some single malt oats coming from copper fox or some yeah. single malt wheat but uh, what we do have in a bottle right now is a single malt rye. Okay. And for the rye, we um, used uh, sassafras smoke. That's sassy, that's sassy rye. That's the sassy rye. It's the, the sassy, sassy rye. Single malt, 100% malted rye, smoked with um, sassafras. But then aged in used bourbon barrels with applewood and oakwood chips. So we didn't use the sassafras in the aging process. But and what's that sassafras do then? What's what's it do to the flavor? Um, if you could combine a cream soda and silk pajamas. And just put those silk pajamas in the barrel for a few years, right? That that's that. that's right. That's right. This is uh, no, it's it is. I I really do enjoy the sassy rye. The sassy rye is very, very unique. That's that's the that's the newest one you're doing, right? As far as your releases, is that the newest one? Well, I think it is. I think it is. The Except you know, right. the cognac rye. The con you have a bottle of the cognac there, right? I have some of the port style right here. Okay. Okay. I love the port style. And the cognac was is was that a, re a distillery only release? Yes, yes. Nice, very nice. And again, if you all have any questions for Rick Wasman himself, ask them down below and tell us down below what you're drinking or tweet back to us and tell us, uh, share this video, like it. Is anyone drinking Copper Fox but you and I? I, I hope they are. Let's see. I'm, I'm going to have them tell us down below. I'm okay. If, if not, it's not like we're so widely distributed that it would be even readily available if you wanted to. I understand. We're working on it. We're working, working. on it. <laughs> if they're not drinking it uh, right now, definitely the best place to, you have a product locator on your website. If they're wanting to find your, um, your products. Kind of. Kind of. <laughs> you can find Google them. I know there's places you can order online. Yeah, it's there are. There are, it's yeah. on the website. There's uh, if, if you enter your space and there is a, if it's possible to be shipped there, we have a store that will ship it. Yeah. It's great whiskey. And for anyone who loves single malt whiskeys, American, Malt whiskeys, bourbon, scotches. It's a little blend of everything plus something else, I've always said. There's just something that's just so unique about this. When I've used it at tastings for our Why Whiskey Educational Series, people have always just had such interesting comments. And the, t the tasting notes that they come back to us with, there's always something new about what we're finding in this whiskey. There's always a new element. There's, you know, hints of the campfire. 
Um, it's it's very complimentary with a cigar. It's uh, there's so much interesting stuff going on. I'm going to put the, your website up there too, just so everybody can see it. CopperFoxDistillery.com. Go to CopperFoxDistillery.com and also. Uh, you know, if you're watching us tonight, make sure you uh, come back. Usually we're here at 8 p.m. on Eastern Eastern time. We do try to keep the website updated every day to tell you, but uh, usually it's 8 p.m. Eastern time. Best place to find us is where you're watching us now or bourbonblog.com forward slash live. And uh, it's just really a, a pleasure to have uh, my good friend Rick Wasman on here and glad that you all are watching us too. Um, what do, you want, do we want to try this? Uh, what do we want to try next? You're trying the sassafras. I'm going to pour a little of the, uh, the the port barrel finish, actually. Yeah, let's do that. Let's support yeah. the port. The and port you can talk to us about the cognac uh, as well, um, and uh, we'll taste through these. Now, you so you were making, or you you still are making some of the hand sanitizer, right? Oh yes, we are. Yes, we are. Jesus, how, the, 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 the demand. Oh my God. Uh, uh, I, you know, I wish I could sell whiskey as fast as hand sanitizer, but uh, you know how it's popular. It's crazy times. It's crazy times. Yeah. I mean, it, you, it's like you know, you go into Home Depot and half the people have masks, half don't. You don't know what to do. Trying to keep the family safe, and you know, my mom's eighty three, and you know, mm -hmm. I don't want to bring any crap home to her, and uh, you know, the kids and school, and it's just. Um, uh, it's, uh, it's, it, it's, uh, never something I expected to go through and, right. you, you know, it, it's, um, what are things you're there in Williamsburg? What are things like right now in Williamsburg? I know a lot of people probably watching have been through Williamsburg at one point, big for tourism, obviously a lot of great restaurants and bars. What, what do things look like? And, or is anything reopening or what's it, what's it like? Well, um, you know, so there's a couple of big economic drivers in Williamsburg. There's uh, the Colonial Williamsburg itself, which is, um, you know, several million visitors a year or a million or something like that. And then Bush Gardens, which is, I mean, they get 20,000 people there a day. Right. Uh, they're, uh, you know, water country. They're all closed. Right. Um, so the streets are quiet. You know, restaurants are um uh you know doing what they can it's right. uh you know we've closed our tasting room but our you know we have a curbside pickup and you know the the um you know the distribution sales are good but you know that was only you know 40 percent of our business most of our business was in store here so sanitizer has helped. Uh, we've had to let a couple people go and that's sad, but we're, you know, we're looking at the ability of reopening, but now we got to like ramp up. It's like all of a sudden, it's just like, are we, you know, are we ready and are we safe? Uh, you, you know, um, I don't, I don't want to open before uh, everyone's comfortable and right. feels good. You know, the good part is in that both locations, we've got this, huge amount of outdoor space so we can spread people out, but right. everyone's got to come in for a drink. Right. Uh, you know, so, uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's crazy. Yes, no, it, it really is. And that is such an important, uh, I know tourism is obviously so important to, to what you do, um, and visitors to the distillery, but also for, for Williamsburg. So we certainly hope things will be better there as well as, as everywhere, um, so you have the um, you have the port style finished rye. I do too. We're gonna. Oh my god, that is so lovely. Just even on the nose, that the, the way that the, the tannins are coming through from the barrel, and just it just it's a really deep. It's a deep. How long do you finish this for? I I, I think there's like two. You know, it was it's our regular rye, which is three years old, and it's another two years wow. in a port barrel. This is a long time in a barrel. In a in the secondary barrel, this is really long. I guess, yeah, because we're too stupid to take it out real quick. But <laughs> but the two uh, that two years really has made it what it is. I mean, this is such a beautiful deep finish. I really I love the depth on it. I love the complexity. It doesn't feel overdone, but it feels velvety. It has this great mouthfeel. 
Um, really nice. Such a nice, nice whiskey. Now, is this one that we can find outside of the distillery? Or is it oh, a distillery release? How do we how do we find this one? Well, I think it's around. I think it's in Kentucky. Um, <laughs> Kentucky. And it's probably in Indiana, uh, but not so much out west. It did make it to Australia. Australia bought everything. They, so, so you really have a following in Australia? I guess, yeah. It's and good. Those people are just so nice. They really um, are, and they like good whiskey. Yeah, yeah. They really do. So, um, yeah, we're thankful for that, and uh, I think we'll be doing some online stuff with them later in like June or something like that, June, July. But um, mm. you know, it's it gets back to this whole thing, you know, the whole world, but. But uh, thank God for technology, right? I can right. see your face, and you know drink. we can talk, and we can have a drink, and um, everybody else. I, I know you have a lot of followers, and uh, you are very kind to Copper Fox and me, and I really appreciate that. It just, but I, I hope that you know. I don't even I don't even know to hope that we all get back to normal is maybe we go beyond normal. Maybe we go to just hanging with people that are really important to us. And, I like that. and, and thinking about how we spend our time and, and who we're with. Right. And it's um, I don't know. I don't know. I but like I think, the word beyond. Uh, we've heard about this new normal people have mentioned, but I like your term beyond normal. I think that could look like uh Something even better than a new normal. I know. But I'll tell you one thing that is still good is a Manhattan with the yeah. rye whiskey. Yes, I, yes, it is. And I'm making one, but I'm trying to do it with one hand because I'm holding this. You can, you can lay the camera down if you need to. We can we can we can kind of watch and make it. There we go. We can uh, we can just know that's what Rick Wasman is making back there. One of his because because I, I couldn't open my Angostura with with uh, <laughs> with one, one of his famous Manhattans and uh, again Rick Wiseman Copper Fox Distillery one of my favorite guys in the business making such interesting whiskey it's just it's one of those things there's there's whiskeys and there's interesting whiskeys that have such flavor such personality and just like the man himself your whiskey has personality depth it's it's something just so unique depth, depth. and it's not boring Tom that's, I know it's is interesting that the, whiskey. Is that is that the worst? You don't want to be boring, and and, and you know that because you're not. You're the when when you look at the um, thesaurus, you know, and the the antonyms. Yes, there's boring, and then the antonyms. I think it's like the third or fourth listing is Tom Fisher. <laughs> I'm glad I'm there on that page. Thank you, Rick. That, yeah. that little drop of whiskey is on that page from from drinking and looking it up, right? That's uh... <laughs> no, it's it's great stuff, and and I just I can't tell you how many. I'm trying to think of some of the the last time I had this at a tasting. I think I may have tasted people on it in Palm Springs last time we featured it someplace. But the the number of different notes that people came back with were just were just so multifaceted. Uh, the smoke, the different ways the smoke comes through. Um, Cigar lovers always love this, but I mean, other people that don't smoke cigars love the way the delicate smoke notes. You can just get all these little hints of different kinds of smoke in there. Did and anyone else notice the CBD? Did you put a little CBD? I thought you might have. Yes. Yeah, did. Has, no, you know, I did not. <laughs> no, no CBD, just silk pajamas in this. Hmm. So pajamas. Our our good friend uh, David Blackmore from the Glen Morangi and our bag watching us. Cheers, cheers, David. I know he likes American single malts as well as uh, his uh, his own. We enjoy his scotch a lot. We had him on a couple weeks ago, which was fun. Uh, you know, David is like one of the greatest guys on the he really planet. Is. And hey, David, how are you, buddy? Um, it's it's fun watching. to see. You know, it's fun to see what's happened. You know, with the growth of all whiskey categories. Scotch and, and American and and um, but you we really have uh, seen such a growth in American single malt. I mean that's a really fast growing category and so many great brands are doing it. You being one of the very first that I know of. Um, what do you think about the? I mean finally I think the 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 market is is it always has liked it, but we're seeing more distilleries doing it. What do you think about that? Just the growth of it. 
But the, the growth of what? The single malt? Just the American single malt category. I mean, we're seeing more and more distilleries doing it, right? Well, yeah, because they tried Copper Fox and they're saying, God, you know, if this idiot can do it. <laughs> they knew you they know. They knew they could. Oh, man, that's great. So how's the, how's the Manhattan? Well, well it's um, – let's see if I can get it. And, ooh. I'm I'm not I think is is Rick I think Rick kind of are you there Rick can you see me he may have gone away from the Wi-Fi signal again let's see okay I, I'm I'm waiting I may I may re-add him here one second Rick um, it looks like he may have stepped away from Wi-Fi and again it's Wasman's uh, well the Wasman's whiskey of course the single malt but the copper fox let me try re-adding him there he is let's see Rick can you hear me. We will try it once again, but again, I'm grateful for everyone watching tonight and just the chance to talk to Rick Wasman because he has such great whiskey. It's such interesting stuff. Um, why are you, okay, someone's, okay, here we go. Here we go. I think we are nearly back there. I am tasting the rye whiskey finished in a port barrel uh, and I think he may be going. We'll see if he'll get back on here. But tell us down below what you're tasting um, and Chris is asking uh, why we're mixing it and a great question, Chris. Um, I love it straight. I do think and neat. I do think it's really great uh, in a cocktail um, and can really do something spectacular for a cocktail, uh, both the rye and the single malt whiskey. Um, it's fun. And I think this has really given us a chance to play with a lot of whiskeys and spirits and create new cocktails. Here he is. I think he's back just the whole time during COVID. All right, there he is. He's back. Sorry. I don't know what happened. I, 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 I... <laughs> I wandered over to my uh, South Pacific map and <laughs> I lost my internet connection. Um, so I guess uh, you know, as we as we as we say thank you know we don't we want people to keep watching, but as we kind of wind down here, all the tasting we're doing, we're tasting some great whiskeys. Um, what's ahead for 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 uh, Copper Fox? We're going to look for the bourbon. What else is going to be ahead as we're as we're going back to uh, the beyond normal as as we look towards the coming months? Okay. Well, I'm, I'm, Tom, I'm going to ask your listeners to, to enter some input, but enter their thoughts. Yes, but please. We have the new distillery coming online. I've got some capacity. I want to do an American whiskey that's going to be predominantly corn. And it might be 51%, not much more. Could be a little less. Yep. Uh, but then the question is for the additional grains. The choices are oats, malted oats, wheat, malted wheat, rye, malted rye, and any of these malts could have the smoke of your choice. Um, and, and then, of course, barley, you know, uh, you know, so we have the malted barley and get the enzymes in there. Right. So, but and we do get a little bit of enzymes from the other grains, but malted barley is the best for converting that cornstarch. Uh, so, what do we do? What do we do? So, I, I want to bring an American whiskey, and then do we just so we're going to chip because we love chipping. Oak works well. Should we use a fruit wood, or do we um, do we just stay with the traditional oak? So this and, is going to become a, a, a new project. You're just kind of getting some ideas. Right. I want to bring, I, I, I think it's important from our portfolio to bring something that's a, a little uh, more uh, in line with kind of the cocktail price point. So the single malt and the rye right now are like 40, you know, mid 40s. Single malt, the rye mid 40s. Okay. Right. But I think if we bring the corn in there, we can probably bring this down into the, you know, uh, mid to upper 20s. And right. that is kind of a, a niche that we don't have. So if we can if we can do that and something really good and a really good mash bill. So that's that's what I'm thinking now. So we'll continue to make the single malts. We'll continue to make our portfolio. But we have this capacity to bring something new out. And um, uh, we're a little bit more efficient in the new setup. I think we can bring something out to help people consume at a at a price level that's just you know not so uh, not so steep. 
I think that's a great idea. And, you know, my immediate thought, and, and do tell us uh, down below uh, or tweet back to us and tell us your thoughts for what um, Rick and his awesome team there at Copper Fox could do. I would still think that having some sort of um, element of the, the fruit wood, uh, one of those would would be ideal to really give it that signature taste from Copper Fox. But of course, I, I mean, I would be open to it. Um, but I think that having some fruit wood influence would be uh, ideal or several different fruit woods um, and having the corn, I think, I think that's a great idea to keep it on that, on that uh, price point. Um, well, and also the American, you know, right. essence to it because it's, it's, you know, it's really good. We did a, um, you know, the Bell Grove was uh, oats, malted barley and corn with um, no smokes. And it was really good. Right. Um, but, uh, for, you know, for the Williamsburg thing, I think, you know, we're not far from where George Washington grew up. And right. when he grew up, you know, he chopped down a cherry tree. Right. Maybe, I don't know, cherry. Maybe, Maybe cherry something with the cherry. George Washington. I like that. Maybe some of the cherry. Cherry would, the cherry would smoke malted oats. <laughs> that could work. As part of the mash bill, but not as the whole thing, you know. So that, and that's what we're trying to do is add these subtle levels of complexity and flavor in there to, to make something interesting. So, I mean, that's the level of thinking where I'm at right now is to, to play around with the subtle variations, not trying to hammer someone with like a hundred percent malted oat whiskey. Although that's not a bad idea. <laughs> All right. Someone just suggested uh, Aaron watching us on YouTube. 50 state malt, different small farms malts from every state. There's an idea. They, we, they don't have malt in Hawaii, Aaron. What are you talking about, man? Maybe just the states they malt in, but interesting. That could be an interesting combination. I mean, and they don't malt in Florida. They can barely vote. <laughs> no, we appreciate you watching, Aaron. I think that that's, I think that could eventually be a multi state project, could be interesting. Uh, someone asked also watching us on Facebook, Frank, you mentioned wheat versus malted wheat. What does malting do for the flavor profile? Mm. Yeah. Okay. That's a great thing. What, um, the, the malt, the, the, the malting process really softens the flavor. Um, and by that, I mean, uh, when you're using the, the grain itself and you grind it into flour and you put that in a mash bill, it's, it's got a strong flavor. And, and there's a conversion that has to take place for that to be effective. Um, and that's done via an enzyme. Uh, but when you do that same conversion in the malting process, it really softens the flavor. Right. So where with a wheat or a rye that's unmalted, you get a, you know, like the rye is a little spicy. Um, the wheat would be a little bit more grassy. By malting it, it smooths and softens uh, in a good way the, the grain. It's, it's the same thing mm -hmm. with the malted barley. It, you know what I'm saying, Tom? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, I, and I love you the fact that the fruit is that. The fruit wood does hit this twice. It hits it in the smoking and also in the barrel. And those two places, like you do the apple, the cherry wood, those are affecting the flavors in different ways, right? Hitting it two, two times. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And um, uh, we'll, I, I will devote another show to the, the relative effects of the chips versus the smoking awesome stuff man I, I i really always enjoy chatting with you and i've learned so much from you and and i think the whiskeys allow us when especially when we can taste uh one of your whiskeys in a lineup of other whiskeys both scotches and american whiskeys it can really showcase just how unique uh the flavor profile is what the smoking process, the malting, everything that you've done has has done for the whiskey world. Uh, I definitely encourage, uh, if you all are watching this and you haven't tried any of the Copper Fox whiskeys, try them out. These are just such special whiskeys for the country. Oh, 
Thanks, buddy. It's true. <laughs> it's very true. Rick Wiseman, Copper Fox Distillery. Tell tell your family, your your, your mom, your your wife, the kids, everybody. We said hello. Uh, it's just so great to see you, and we're really looking forward to uh, seeing you again here in the future. Hopefully, not too long from now when all this is over. We'd love to come see you guys again. Uh, yeah, that would be. Um, let, let's make it happen. It yeah. will happen. It's it coming will. back. It's coming back. I don't know exactly when, but we'll be safe about it. But we will be together in person, bending an elbow, and you're going to try some great whiskeys when you come here next. I, I look forward to that. And hopefully everybody watching will look forward to having a whiskey with you too. And if you have any questions at all you want to shoot me, always feel free to drop me a line at TomAndBurmanBlong.com. Uh, and I am hosting some virtual tastings now, too. So if your business, your company, your friends, you want to get on and do something like this and do a virtual tasting, I'm hosting virtual tastings. Drop me a line. And we can make that happen as well. we got to find some way of bringing everybody together over a glass of whiskey, right, Rick? That's a fantastic idea. Yeah. I, I'm, I'll call you on that because I think I have a couple. Of, uh, we can do. We, we can get you hooked up there. I like it, man. It's great to see you, Rick. Thanks, everybody, for watching us tonight on Bourbon Blog Live. Come back tomorrow. Tomorrow I'll have my uh, my friend Kerry Bringle, famous barbecue pit master uh, in Nashville, Tennessee. He has his own Tennessee uh, bourbon, Tennessee straight bourbon. Watch us there tomorrow live. Kerry Bringle tomorrow? You know Kerry Bringle? Yeah, what time? 8 p.m. Eastern. Watch Kerry and me. We'll be oh talking. God, you got to watch that. Oh <laughs> it's, it's crazy fun. It's Kerry is a good time. All right, peach to the Middle East. Peach to the Middle East, buddy. Cheers. Cheers, pal. Cheers.